Since 1885, 28 areas have been set aside as national parks for the use of present and future generations. These parks are dedicated to the people of Canada for their benefit, education, and enjoyment. One of the newest of these, containing 80 square miles of New Brunswick's natural beauty and grandeur, is Fundy National Park. Through the mists of dawn, the treetops reach to welcome the warm advances of the sun. This is a land of trees, of scented forest, of rugged terrain. And this is a land by the sea, its shoreline washed and carved by the mighty tides of the Bay of Fundy. The age-old history of nature has been etched here by the hand of a restless sea. In this land so richly blessed by nature, man has built a sanctuary by the sea. A playground whose quiet loveliness and physical comforts offer a haven to seekers after peace, beauty, recreation and leisurely enjoyment. At the eastern entrance to the park stands the little village of Alma in a typical East Coast setting. We took our holidays in August that summer and thought we'd see what the new Fundy Park had to offer. At the western gateway to the park, the warden on duty told us a lot about it, where to go and what there is to do. Amongst other things, he told us that, like all of Canada's national parks, Fundy is a game sanctuary. Of course, hunting and the possession of unsealed firearms are not allowed. We drive about a dozen miles through rolling, wooded country, and suddenly, there is the Bay of Fundy with Nova Scotia in the distance. The combination of hill and sea gives the park a special charm of its own. At the main park area, a colorful little French village lies before us. In a spruce grove overlooking the bay stands a community of cottages, each designed along the lines of the old French chalet. The beauty and simple taste of these cottages is matched by their comfort and compact neatness. Each one has a big bed sitting room besides its own kitchen, bathroom and heating unit, as we discover when we move into our new home. A minute's walk away is the first tee of the sporty golf course, which follows the contours of the southern slope of the park. Most of the fairways are within sight of the sea. Besides affording some picturesque vistas, the course has natural hazards to test the skill of the average golfer. For most golfers, the Fundy Greens run straight and true. But then, my brand of golf is never treated with proper respect by certain people. After golf, or for that matter at any time, the saltwater swimming pool is a pleasant and refreshing place to relax. The cold water from the bay is filtered and warmed to a comfortable temperature. Sunny hours by the pool may be strenuous or relaxing as desired. Swimming at Fundy is wonderful and varied. The most rugged taste and temperature can be met on the shores of Herring Cove or in one of the many sheltered bays along the coast. And the open water of the bay is more than merely stimulating. 
The park has sports facilities to suit every taste. The tennis courts are an attraction for racket enthusiasts from far and near. Tournaments and competitions are held throughout the summer. The clubhouse is the center of the park's social life. Its attractive appointments include a comfortable roomy lounge where refreshments may be obtained. For those who prefer a simpler, more informal way of living, the campgrounds overlooking the bay form a charming setting for an al fresco meal. Cool sea breezes freshen the summer's heat and make life in the open very delightful. There are several campgrounds in the park. Each of them is well equipped to make vacation life comfortable, whether in tent or trailer. In the quiet wooded countryside around Bennett Lake, some find their delight in leisurely exploration. There are animals and birds in abundance. They seem to realize that in this wonderful, peaceful haven, they are safe from the gun and trap of the hunter and Canada's national animal, the beaver, industriously sets about the job of keeping his house in order. Along the shores of the lake, there are usually a few white-tailed deer to be found. Accustomed to human visitors, they sometimes even feed by the side of the main highway. You have to be up pretty early in the morning to catch sight of a moose having breakfast. But soon after sunrise, or late in the evening, this great animal of the forest can usually be found feeding in the lily pads. In the swift rivers and streams, the trout rise readily to the fly. The cold, deep pools of the Point Wolf River offer good sport and are easy to reach. Eventually, it is hoped that this river will be stocked with salmon to provide the game fisherman with one of his greatest thrills. For those who like to explore on foot, there are many trails to follow. And at the end of the road, there is always some new point of interest to reward the enterprising hiker. At the Park Administration Building, an information office supplies all sorts of help to visitors. Nor have the children been forgotten. Their own special playground gives the youngsters plenty to keep them busy. The New Brunswick School of Arts and Crafts is in the park's community hall. Holidaying hobbyists can study the craft of their choice be it weaving, leatherwork, or wood turning. Across McLaren Pond lies a natural bowl where stage and amphitheater form the park's entertainment center. Plays, concerts, sing songs, film shows, all have a new appeal when presented in the picturesque setting. The holiday is over, and through the shadowed woods, the silence falls. But the countryside itself puts on its holiday attire and bursts forth in the glory that is autumn, in a final blaze of beauty and color before the snow flies. Perhaps it is at this season that Fundy is at its most brilliant best. The wooded ridges reaching inland from the coast become a sea of crimson and gold, of purple and green and brown. It was Francis Joseph Sherman, one of New Brunswick's best loved poets, who sang, October's peace hath fallen on everything, in the far west above the pine-crowned hill. With red and purple yet the heavens thrill, 
the passing of the sun remembering.